So basically, um, in this coding lecture, we'll prepare for what we have for homework two. Um, we we'll explore um, our data set, um, you know, used in homework two, and uh, we will learn some uh, keywords, Python keywords, um, commonly used in coding uh, machine learning applications. So, um, okay, it works. Um, so this is today's goal. First, we'll explore MNIST dataset. And, uh, um, and then we'll learn what is a generator, what is iterator, and a few of these functions. And then we'll learn uh, this uh, enumerate, this built-in function. Okay. And uh, so the first one, is this is a toy data set and it's handwritten digit. So what happens here is apparently different people. I mean, when we write digits, we write them differently. A bigger question in computer vision is we wanna design a computer program to be able to tell uh, the difference between these digits. For example, uh, right now we can use cell phone to deposit our checks. Okay. So we upload our image and uh, the app will automatically recognize, like for example, the letters and the digits uh, we wrote on the check, no matter, let's say how scribbless our handwriting is. Normally it's pretty confident. Okay, so this is what it's like for MNIST dataset. It's basically having all these different digits. And uh, um, if we wanna test or benchmark uh, our algorithm, um, it's perfectly fine to try our algorithm um, in this uh, uh, digit recognizer competition. Um, so for example, we can benchmark um, our algorithm to check like uh, uh, how many points we scored in the data set and what is the accuracy. Uh, we, we can predict all these handwritten digits. Okay, so now let's first import uh, the library. Um, these, so these two modules will import forever. And what today we're, we're gonna import is the Torch Vision. So the Torch Vision has the MNIST dataset um, like uh, directly. So um, for example, we can load Torch data. Oh, by the way, I forgot to uh, send the link of this notebook. Um, I think, let me pull up GitHub. So the link to this notebook is, uh, where is my repository? Okay, okay, right there. Um, so, So I just send the link uh, to the code uh, in the chat. Um, we can open it up and it has a button uh, right up. So uh, if we click it, um, it has a button right here, open in Colab. And for example, if we click it, uh, it will show right here. Okay, so let me back here. And uh, we'll explain what is uh, this data loader uh, in the moment. Um, what is this data loader in the moment? Um, and right here, uh, we just load uh, two uh, plot modules to help us plot uh, the pi plot and Seaborn. Um, Seaborn is a very nice uh, plotting interface. Uh, if, um, I mean, for data science, in general, it, it is very nice. It is very elegant. So uh, PyPlot is a bit dated. So this one has 
a bit dated. If we want to, um, if we want to make our figure look pretty, for example, um, I'm not sure if you guys know a famous website called Five Thirty Eight. Um, so Five Thirty Eight has lots of uh, um, like nice figures and nice plot. Uh, if we want to plot figure like 538, I highly recommend Seaborn. So if you can Google Seaborn, um, so Seaborn is uh, is a very nice uh, data visualization tool box, and uh, it has lots of example gallery as well. Um, and uh, if we want to write papers. And if we want to produce some report, Seaborn is the best tool to use. Okay, so here we will you uh, import Seaborn, and uh, let's run this cell. So here we can download this data set locally on uh, on Google. Uh, let me reformat it so it's easy to view. Um, I think I have already downloaded uh, in my cloud. So if uh, if we the, it's the first time we run this uh, um, cell. It should take a while to uh, download the file. Here I already downloaded the file. So if I check uh, type of train, I should have yeah the data set. And if I check uh, the uh, the size of the data set, whoops, where I have that. So if I check the size of the data set. Uh, we will have this as uh, 60,000. So we have 60,000 images of handwritten digits. Uh, first, then next, next is we want to uh, put this train, okay, into a loader. So first of all, uh, these train, they have labels and images. So I believe, uh, so train, uh, train data, okay, right here. So for example, uh, we have this uh, train data. So which I believe is a data. Okay, so 60,000. Um, and then we have train labels. Uh, train labels. Oh, my bad. Uh, let's print it. So for example, we have uh, 60 uh, labels, 60,000 labels and uh, um, 60,000 um, data. Oh, um, has been renamed data. So I can just do data. Okay. So has been renamed the targets. Okay, so we can do targets. I see, interesting. Um, all right, so these are the datas. I guess um, um, my knowledge of uh, this is a little bit uh, deprecated, um, and then we put it into a data loader, and we will explain uh, what is a data loader for a while. Um, let me first, uh, like, motivate why we want to use a data loader. For example, if we have millions of data, it's impossible to load them all into memory at once. So however, if we put data in a loader, in every iteration, only the batch size number of sample uh, will be, I would change this to batch size. So only this many of uh, data will be loaded. So this is what, uh, uh, it is like for data loader. For example, we have 60,000 images, right? If we put it into a data loader and we use, uh, uh, we use these two lines. So we'll see that. We'll see that only one images got loaded. So 28 by 28, uh, 28 by 28 is, uh, the size of an image. 
So only one image got uh, loaded. And uh, in next few cells, we'll explain what is this eta and what is next. As we, we can see here, the collab already highlighted these two keywords in different color. So uh, this is a building function eta and uh, this is a building function next. So they are all Python building function. And now uh, let's uh, uh, learn. So the eta next and the what is a generator. So for example, this train loader here. So uh, this train loader here is a generator. And first, let's look at uh, this function, okay? So this function has a, has a while loop. And I believe in our, um, let's say, computer coding class 101, our instructor tells us, okay, do not do this, do not ever do the while true loop because this is an infinite loop. So for example, um, normally, let's name this old. So normally if we wanna get a sequence, what we do is n equals zero. So while n is less than 10, um, so n, plus equal one, and then we return n. So for example, um, okay, let's do, uh, let's do a list equals, and while uh, n is less than zero, we append uh, n in this list, and then we return this list. I mean, this, this, is a, this is like a perfectly regular function. So uh, for example, if we, uh, if we run this function, so we do list, uh, we, we just run this function sequence old, it will give us zero to nine, I believe. Oh, it's a sequence, my bad. So it will give us zero to nine, right? So this is how we generate a sequence like the old school, um, coding programming class 101 way. Okay, so this is the new way. This is uh, uh, the generator way. So the generator has two keywords. The first one, so the first is while true is the, 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 the first keywords uh, for a generator, okay? The yield is the second keywords. second keyword. So the yield is like return, but the yield will tell Python, this is the generator. So if we have returned this keyword, the return means this is a function. So Python will tell us because we have this return, uh, this is a function. If we have yield, uh, yield means uh, this is a generator. So let's try this. Um, let's first define this function and uh, let's try what happens here. So as we can see, it's running forever. And uh, uh, if we don't stop it, it will uh, basically um, print the sequence forever because it is while true. So here, um, and, but this is how we build a generator, okay. So if we let F equals the sequence and uh, we print the type of this function, um, so Python will tell us this is a, uh, um, this is a generator. And normally we can use uh, iterator to build a generator. 
So let me explain what is uh, what is the iterator. So anything that can iterate is called an iterator. So for example, whoops. Uh, let me add a new. So example of iterator. So for example, we have list A. So A equals um, apple, pear, orange. This can be an iterator because we can write something like this. So for fruit in A, print fruit, okay? Why this is an iterator? Because we can put this variable in right here in this for loop. So for example, if we do this, we will print um, every element, whoops, every element of uh, uh, apple, pear, orange of this list. So similarly, similarly, uh, if we have a torch, uh, let, me, let me fix the seed, torch manual seed 42. Um, So for example, what we have here is just the torch tensor. We have uh, 10 rows and two columns. This is like uh, uh, we have 10 points and each one of them is in a 2D plane. Um, and what's interesting here, okay? So what's interesting here is we can, rewrite this X as an iterator or say a generator. What happens is what if we have this X has a million row, we are not, we cannot afford loading this X in our memory. What we can do, so for example, is we can first write something like this, okay? So this will convert X into a generator. So we don't have to we don't have to load X into memory at once. And meanwhile, it's an iterator. Okay. So for example, so now let's try. X itself is already an iterator. So for example, we can do this. So for example, if for row in X, we print row. So for example, uh, we just print every row of, uh, of this X. Now, once we convert it to an iterator, we can use this keyword next. So next, So as we can see here, uh, um, how do I invoke help? Yeah. Okay, anyway. So the next will basically return. So next will return, next literally returns. Oh, right here, one. Okay, right here. Returns the next item from the iterator. So basically. So it's literally like next. For example, if I run this, if we run this cell of code, it will return the first entry here, okay? And now if we run it again, it will, um, return the second entry. The difference between, the difference between this for loop and this next is, the next does not load X at once. Instead, it uh, load, loads X row by row, so only it loads X one row at a time. Like I said, imagine we have a million rows, we cannot load 
them into memory at once. However, this for this for loop, so x is loaded in memory at once. So for example, in, in our exam, we may be asked, okay, so uh, we may be presented with two chunk of code. So the question may be, which one of them is more memory efficient in machine learning? Um, the answer is always, you know, this one is mem more memory efficient. So using an um, iterator, all right? So as we can see the, the, um, the eater, this command converts something into a generator, which is also an iterator. The next basically returns the next item. So now we can back to what happened. We can come back and see what happens here. All right, okay. So basically this line of code um, returns the next sample in our train loader, which is a generator. So for example, here we have an image and we have labels. So let's try to see what label is. So for example, this label is a three and uh, let's try to visualize this image to see if it's a, if it's a three, okay. Um, so let's come back to this image again. So the image, the first dimension is, uh, um, so it has four dimensions, right? Uh, actually, this is a standard, this is a standard, like uh, I would say image format used in uh, Torch. So X is zero, let me add a comment here. So X is zero denotes the number of samples in our, this image generated by the loader. The axis one, which is this dimension, okay? So it is uh, the number of color channels. And then axis uh, two and three, so they are like, uh, they basically, they are the length. So how many rows? of the image, of a single image, okay? So for example, this reads as we have one image in our batch and this image has one color channel because it's, uh, I mean, it's handwritten digits, it's black and white. Um, and lastly, it is every image is a 28 by 28, this matrix, okay? So first step, uh, let me first copy this. So first step is we squeeze them. So these two are called a singleton dimension. So for example, we only have one entry. If we squeeze them, uh, and let's print, uh, so uh, if we do image size again, so we'll have uh, uh, these two got removed. So now let's plot it. So now let's plot it and we'll find it's a three, okay? And this function image show right here is plotting a matrix as an image. If we view this matrix, for example, image, we see that it's a matrix full of numbers, okay, right? So we have some numbers between zero and one. And uh, um, so right here, it is, uh, if uh, it's basically, if the color map gray basically means, um, use the value to denote uh, the brightness, okay? So use the value of a pixel to uh, denote the uh, brightness. And next we just randomly uh, generate uh, 10 of them. Our train data has been renamed the data. So let me 
the data and the targets. So let's randomly uh, let's random uh, let's randomly plot ten of them. Uh, for example, so we can see here this is eight, this is six, zero, one, zero, three, three, one. Let's plot uh, again. Okay, this one is more diverse. Uh, we have nine, we have zero, we have two, uh, three sevens, and we have two fives and uh, one twos. And, uh, um, the next I wanna illustrate uh, one of the keyword uh, we use here. This is enumerate, okay? So enumerate, we will use a lot if we dedicate our coding to uh, data science. So enumerate is a very handy tool in Python. Uh, I would say um, it make enumerate single-handedly make Python more convenient in uh, loops than um, C or C++. So, but now C, of course, now C has this enumerate function, but originally the, the Python first had have it. So now let's try enumerate. Okay, so we'll come back to this. Uh, uh, we'll come back to this later. Uh, let me let me let me uh, change this first. Okay, so target targets. Um, so for example, right here is uh, we choose we choose um, all the image with a label seven. So uh, let, me, let me choose it. And uh, um, so let me do data new here. Okay. So for example, we choose randomly here, we randomly choose 10 of them. Um, so let's try to view, um, let's try to view print Data new size. So for example, right now we have 10 samples uh, because we, we just got rid of the singular dimension of the color. Um, so we have 10 samples and each sample is the 28 by 28 image. And let's recall um, old way of, uh, of come iterate them. So for example, so old school way of uh, a counter, okay? So for example, we can loop for image in data new. And we wanna print uh, images size. But uh, if we wanna, if we wanna like build a counter, a counter that counts, how many times this print function is being executed, uh, we can do something like this. So counter equals zero. And whenever this print function got, you know, uh, executed, uh, counter plus one, okay? So for example, so let's print uh, counter. Uh, and then if we have 10 samples, we know that the, it, the print will be executed 10 times. Uh, so we will get uh, this counter is 10. Okay. The other way is for example, um, for example, we wanna know uh, how many uh, numbers uh, in like less than a thousand can be divided by um, seven, uh, you know, so this is a simple exercise, maybe, you know, like a simple coding interview. Um, what is the most efficient way to do this? So we can do counter equals zero for I in range thousand, sorry. Um, if, I can be divided by uh, seven, okay, sorry. So if I 
can be divided by seven counter plus one. And then we print counter. So for example, we have a 143, that number can be divided by seven. Okay. So this is how we manually build a counter is uh, we set the counter to be zero first, and then we add one if needed. Okay. Now let's see another way. So we have this simple example. For example, we have a list. Uh, we have a list. We can have, okay, so let's do array. So for example, let's use this array right here. Okay. So data new here. Um, oh, well, let, let's still use array. So X equals torch uh, rand n 10 and two, okay. If we wanna track the counter, we can use enumerate. So for I row in X and let's print. Um, index is basically I and uh, um, and row is row. Let's see what happens. Um, sorry. I forgot to put the enumerate here. So if we put the enumerator here, we're gonna see, um, this is the first row, which is the zeroth row, which is this tensor. And this is the first row. So what this I does is this I becomes a counter now. So, and it counts which row we are at for this X, okay? So this is what enumerate does. So for example, in the code here, um, in the code here, basically we just enumerate um, through this, through these indices. And uh, um, so let's print the indices. So for example, these are the indices, okay? And we know that this is the first, like the entry, okay? Second entry, so entry zero, entry one, entry two, entry three. And if we do for I, I is the index, okay? Entry in enumerate indices, Let's print uh, index, which is I, and uh, uh, entry is entry, okay? So for example, the zeroth entry is this guy. The first entry is this guy. The third entry is this guy. So in, in some, for example, in an exam problem, um, we may have certain, you know, array or some list uh, and we, uh, we have this enumerator and you will be asked to uh, which um, are the correct output, you know. So this is how we use uh, enumerate. Um, and next is, uh, um, so now next is, Oh, uh, by the way, we haven't done this uh, uh, seven. So here, so for example, so right here, the data new is, uh, we have this, right? And if we do, if we visualize a single sample, by the way, we chose uh, all the target to be seven. So if we, uh, if we view a single sample, so uh, if we view a single sample, this data new, for example, if we view the first sample um, without CMAP, I'm not sure what's the default CMAP. Okay, this is the CMAP. So for example, this is the seven 
if we view the first one, so we'll have this seven. Um, so the second one is like this seven, and uh, and basically data new contains ten samples of seven. All right, and what happens is in our first in so not in our this homework but in our next homework we will train a neural network that you know can basically can recognize these digits from 0 to 9 and what we want to do is first of all our neural network only takes input of a vector okay um i mean what we want to do first is we want to reshape. We want to reshape every single vector in the batch uh, into like a vector that a neural network can take as an input. So for example, um, let's do x equals uh, data new. The first image. So if we print X size, we will have, this is a 28 by 28 like image. So it's a matrix basically. And what we wanna do is, is first we wanna reshape it into something that can be fed into a neural network. So for example, what this is a common practice, okay. So even though uh, in lecture, we use column vector, but in practice, uh, again, I wanna emphasize in practice, one row represents one sample. So right here, how do we reshape X into a row vector is we use this minus one trick. So we always use this minus one trick. So what do we do is uh, we do X view, okay? If we have one sample, we just do one and second dimension, we just do minus one, okay? So let me put this in a new line. So the first, input of the view is the number of samples. Okay, so here we only have one sample. X is one sample. Um, and the second, second input being minus one means uh, we just let whatever PyTorch decide the dimension. So for example, if we do this and let's print X size again, we will get this 1784, okay? So now if the, so this one denotes that we have one sample and the 784 means we have 784 features to give our neural network. So now let's try that. So for example, if we have layer one um, is Oh, I haven't imported an N yet. Let's import an N. So import torch and N as an N linear. So 784 and 58. I, I'm just randomly choose number, maybe one, 28. Okay. Um, Okay, so I got a question. I got a question in, uh, um, I got a question here. Actually, it's very good, I think. So let me emphasize this. Um, this is literally the same with X reshape uh, one minus one. However, however, reshape is slightly, slightly uh, slower. So uh, reshape is a slightly, uh, slower, maybe say, uh, maybe 10 mu second slower. Um, 
So it's slightly slower. It, they do the same thing, but because reshape is uh, because reshape um, is a NumPy legacy function uh, implemented in Torch. So this is a this is a native function in Torch, and this reshape is uh, is like NumPy because um, people are used to NumPy, right? So people likes to use like NumPy syntax, but uh, um, but this is native in uh, this is native in Torch. So I, I sometimes I I mix them, um, so it really depends. Um, but uh, you can use both. But I recommend use this one uh, for bigger uh, projects. So now, and uh, then we can have, for example, we can have uh, Z1 to be layer one of, uh, of uh, this X now, because X is being reshaped so that our neural network can take it. And let's print a Z shape, Z1 shape, or like size. So now it becomes a 128. It's it, basically we apply a linear transform to a uh, this vector and convert it to a 128 vector. And same thing for the batch. Okay, so same thing. For example, the capital X is just data new. Um, so view. We know that we have we have ten samples. Okay. We have 10 samples, so len data new. So len data new is basically how many samples we have. Uh, and we do this, okay. And let's try to put in, uh, put this X in uh, our layer one and let's print Z1 size. And we'll see that, so this one is like 10, so this one will become 10,784, but after the linear transformation, it becomes 10,128. So uh, it becomes 10 samples and each sample uh, is of 128 long, all right? So in the last few minutes, uh, I may not finish it, but uh, uh, in the last few minutes in homework two, we will see something like this. So we will see this with. So with is a keyword um, that's commonly used in uh, Python IO. IO means uh, input output. Um, but keep this in mind. Um, we can take with literally. So. Um, we can take this keyword with literally. So with is like a, it's literal meaning in Python. So with torch no grad and this blah, blah command executed here, it literally means this blah, blah, blah is executed with no gradient taken in torch. So, let us see a simple example here. So this is a, this is a benchmark function. Uh, use the context manager function decorator. So this is a decorator, but uh, if we have time, we may learn this later. So this is called a decorator in Python. And this function again uses yield, okay? So yield means, uh, this is a generator. It means it, it's being loaded into um, the memory when never needed. So, and this is a timer. We from time uh, import time. Um, so the old school way of uh, doing timing. So let me first run this few cells. So for example, we want to benchmark how fast is matrix vector multiplication. What we do is we do start equals time. Uh, and then we do X, uh, we do Y equals a, a matrix multiplication with B, okay. And then we end equals time, we, we time again. And then we print like how many, 
seconds have passed. So we print uh, and subtract start. And let's print like uh, uh, five digits, four digits, seconds. Okay. Um, maybe maybe even more. Maybe we need six seconds. Okay. Uh, no, no. Uh, six digits after the decimal. So as we can see, uh, we have to do this end. Okay. Now let's see what happens with this, uh, you know, with. So this timer function can be used like this. So with timer, okay. So we can do matrix vector mm, matrix vector multiplication. And we just do y equals a dot mm b. And let's see what happens. We don't have to imp explicitly implement this in the time and it will tell us the matrix vector multiplication is done in this many seconds, okay? So this is a timer function we can use. And below we have a fancier timer. Uh, I personally use on my own computer. And uh, so we can do this fancy timer. So torch mm y equals a mm b. It will also print like the memory usage. So for example, um, it tells us the local memory usage and uh, you know and the end. So that's it for today. So we learned some something we need for like homework two. And, uh, uh, and see you guys on Monday. If you have some short question, you are welcome to stay here and uh, ask. Okay, so I'll stop recording here.